I'd like to start today's Neville Goddard conversation off with a personal story related to thought transmission, one of our inherent powers which can be operated by law through fourth dimensional thinking. I also like to discuss how multiple deliberate fourth dimensional thinking acts can manifest at the same time, ideally synchronistically, proving that the great law works beyond beliefs of time and space. For example, I often imagine people like Neville talking to me as I study their work, which plays out interestingly. They may appear in lucid dreams, teaching their work in relation to different experiences of my life related to the law. I also imagine others showing up as clients or business deals to discuss experiences with the law abiding in and from the Dr. Milliken auto-suggestion Neville shared, which is, I have a lavish, steady, dependable income consistent with integrity and mutual benefit. I also imagine meeting you people, wherever I am, who apply the law in creative ways that I've not heard discussed before, who openly share their stories and ways with me. And I also like to capture the one sensation, the one ideal sensation, and abide in and from that state, which is, isn't it wonderful? Suspending judgment as to what wonderful means to allow the senses to evidence all which is wonderful. So all of these fourth dimensional acts, fourth dimensional meaning thinking feelingly, from the end, played out in wonderful harmony together recently. Now, many of you know, if you're on my email list or on my Instagram stories recently, a few weeks ago, I collaborated with the Napoleon Hill Institute on a retreat that was run in Palmaya House of Aya in Playa del Carmen, Mexico. On the Friday leading up to it, I received a text from Cleona, who is the CEO of the Napoleon Hill Institute, which mentioned something like, It looks like the flight for Sunday from Toronto is booked. Would you like to fly with us to Mexico from New York tomorrow? We could fly you down here, go for dinner with Chiara, who's a partner with the Institute, and you can stay in a nice hotel, and then Sunday morning we can all fly out. So I said yes, as it was a wonderful treat related to the feeling of, isn't it wonderful? And interestingly as well, when I ended up walking into the restaurant, I was stunned. A wonderful memory came back. It was a few years prior. I had this dream with Napoleon and Neville. They were sitting down well-dressed at the table, which was at that restaurant. And I'd never been to this restaurant before. And they were sharing some information with me to apply and also put into our discussions on this channel. Now, this was not the first time I had a dream talking to Napoleon or Neville. I've had a bunch over the years. This was the first dream where it was both of them at the same time in one dream. As you may know, I credit Think and Grow Rich as the book that introduced me to the law in 2004. Many who I've spoken with were also introduced to the law through Think and Grow Rich. I've earned millions applying the information from Think and Grow Rich, and so have many who read the book. Notably, my favorite chapters include The Subconscious Mind, Autosuggestion, and The Sixth Sense. And Neville showed up within awareness in 2019 to further add to my understanding of the law and clarify scripture in relation to the law which is what he does for me at times when he shows up in our invisible council lucid dreams. So we ended up at the same restaurant where I dreamt of, meeting Napoleon Hill and Neville, proving that reality, time, and space are not as rigid in conviction as one might think, and how everything that is consciously imagined ideally can be allowed to appear at once in perfect harmony if we don't try to control or mess with it playing out, as stated in Scripture, Romans 11.33. O the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. And Isaiah 55, 9. Just as the heavens are higher than the earth, my thoughts and my ways are higher than yours. This means, although the human may try to figure out, it's best not to worry or be concerned about those details and allow the law to take care of those details for you. We simply imagine it ideally and walk by faith, allowing it to appear. And faith is ideal because if one looks towards the appearances of the world made visible through the five senses for what and how they should think for themselves, they may forget that the world made visible through the five senses originated from consciousness through imagination. If the world of the five senses is a reflection of consciousness made visible through imagination, then does it not all exist somewhere before it appears, and all figured out already? Well, Genesis 2.1 says, 
So the creation of the heavens and the earth and everything in them was completed. Joshua 1.3 says, Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses. So now by them also living by the conscious application of the law, it led to many interesting conversations over dinner, which as mentioned is how I like my conversations to appear these days. And also at the retreat during the week, everyone was having the same thoughts at the same time. And also countless synchronicities were happening in other ways related to my conscious imaginal acts. And it felt like one long auto-suggestion and also downloading of next level auto-suggestions, we could say. This would be what I consider as an ideal mastermind as mentioned in Think and Grow Rich. And so in summary thus far, thought transmission and fourth dimensional thinking brought us all there. It happened ideally automatically by law. Also interestingly, the retreat started with me reading from an original print of a 1937 copy of Think and Grow Rich printed in 1937 when it was released, and it was signed by Bob Proctor. I have some pictures on the screen. The book apparently arrived just in time for the retreat, and Bob had signed it for someone by the name of Elaine. It says, Read this every day for the rest of your life. Love and light, Bob Proctor. And so by this degree of synchronization, we prove once again that consciousness is one and appears ideally automatically by law as Neville said here in The Power of Awareness with respect to consciousness. The light is consciousness. Consciousness is one, manifesting in legions of forms or levels of consciousness. There is no one that is not all that is, for consciousness, though expressed in an infinite series of levels, is not divisional. There is no real separation or gap in consciousness. I am cannot be divided. See this part here? Very important. I am cannot be divided. And this is why thought transmission and fourth dimensional thinking works perfectly. As you think from the premise of it already being ideally so, it is transmitted to others by law and they show up automatically to play it all out. So we discussed in Thursday's video, which I'll link to in the description, consciousness being the light and the individual's mind appearing within consciousness as reflective consciousness. And by that I mean, the world made visible through the five senses, which we can call the outer expressions of life, are manifestations of reflective consciousness. Consciousness is the light which is one with all, which is ultimately you, that refracts out according to the imaginal acts impressed on your subconscious mind to manifest as the world made visible through the five senses. As he says here, your consciousness is the light reflected on the mirror of your mind and projected in space to the one whom you think. By mentally speaking to the subjective image in your mind, you cause the mirror of your mind to vibrate. Your vibrating mind modifies the light of consciousness reflected on it. The modified light of consciousness reaches the one toward whom it is directed and impringes on the mirror of their mind. It causes their mind to vibrate according to the modification it undergoes. Thus, it reproduces in them what was mentally affirmed by you. So when he says, your consciousness, it is referring to Atman. And when we say consciousness is one, we are referring to Brahman. So life experiences are a reflection of our subconsciously accepted fourth dimensional thoughts, beliefs, and states, which play out automatically as life experiences with others, as he says here. To awaken a state within another, it must first be awakened within you. The state you would transmit to another can only be transmitted if it is believed by you. Therefore, to give is to receive. So life thus appears in relation with others as subconsciously accepted fourth dimensional thoughts, beliefs, and states, which others reflect, as he further shares here. Your beliefs, your fixed attitudes of mind, Constantly modify your consciousness as it is reflected on the mirror of your mind. Your consciousness, modified by your beliefs, objectifies itself in the conditions of your world. To change your world, you must first change your conception of it. To change another, you must change your conception of them. You must first believe them to be the one you want them to be and mentally talk to them as though they were. 
So beliefs, states, or fixed attitudes of mine are not written in stone. If one believes that, consider releasing identification to that belief by self-suggesting otherwise, as your subconscious mind accepts whatever suggestion you feel as real. Then suggest to yourself how you would like others to appear, like for example with the Dr. Milliken auto-suggestion Neville suggested earlier, and they appear that way. And so very important, it does not return unto you void. And you'll know as you hear them communicating what you imagine when they appear. We do this by also considering the following prior to the imaginal act, as he says. Disregard appearances and subjectively affirm as true that which you wish to be true. This awakens in you the tone of the state affirmed, which in turn realizes itself in you and in the one whom it is affirmed. Give and ye shall receive. Beliefs invariably awaken what they affirm. The world is a mirror wherein everyone sees himself reflected. The objective world reflects the beliefs of the subjective mind. So we do this, just as he said one time, in relation to what I discussed about consciousness. He said, Any time that we exercise our imagination lovingly on behalf of another, we are actually and literally mediating God to them. And why is this the case that they appear this way? That is because love is our true nature. No matter what beliefs are on the mirror of their mind, they always accept their true nature, which is love. This was one of the topics we discussed at the event, as participants were all in various leadership roles. They were already doing this based on imagining others this way. Their relationships with others would appear to change according to thinking fourth dimensionally. And they would appear saying the same thing proving fourth dimensional thinking. And so we shared many stories and examples of how this was occurring. So consider this when it comes to thought transmission. It is an effect of thinking fourth dimensionally. And by that I mean thinking feelingly from the premise of already having ideal relationships, which is our true nature as consciousness is ultimately one. And they naturally appear that way with stories of communicating the same thing. And when thinking ideally from the premise of already having ideal relationships with others, what helps is ensuring that we are not thinking feelingly one moment from the premise of what is ideal, and then thinking feelingly opposite to it more often in a not-so-ideal way. And by that I mean, allow space for it to emerge by not thinking feelingly at all from the premise of concern. Abide in your ideal state of flow, which is your natural way of being. By being this way, which is your natural way of being, you allow it to all happen ideally by letting there be light. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You could say, every day in increasing frequency, I think feelingly only from the premise of already having ideal relationships with others the way I desire. As I continue to think feelingly like this about all the people I imagine, they ideally automatically appear in a wonderful synchronistic way to play out how I imagine life to be. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.